Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel electrical technology and industrial practice. So as you can see that today our topic is uh, specification of substation. Okay. So in this video, we will be discussing that how a substation is defined, what are the design criteria of a substation and how the ratings are uh, defined. Uh, so th this video is mostly a theoretical video, but you will get a clear idea that what will be the main characteristics to be present uh, from electrical perspective in a substation okay so let's begin the video okay so while defining the specification of any substation we have to keep in mind that the specification of any substation shall be made in such a way that it at least represent the following what I have written here. Okay, so number one is rating. Rating means the voltage rating, the power rating, the frequency, fault current, etc. Then the design requirements. Okay, so whether it will be indoor type, outdoor type, what will be the civil facilities and other mechanical requirement. Uh, so these things also has to be present in the uh, specification. Then the technical aspects of the substation, okay, so where it is located, in what ambient condition it is located and purpose or application for which purpose the substation is supposed to be used, whether it is a receiving substation, it is a distributing, distribution substation or generating substation or load center substation. So these, all these things will cover the actual specification of the substation. So when you will define the specification of a substation, your detail, uh, uh, I mean, detailed ratings requirement shall consist of the following. Okay, so it should be appearing, this data should be appearing in your specification. So in the upcoming sections, we will be looking that how these things are represented. Okay. Okay, so there are several factors that guide the design of a substation. Okay, in, the, in this section, we will be discussing of that. So number one is fault current and continuous current. Okay, these are very two important part of a substation. Then the load and the voltage level. Depending on the load, you need to select the transformer size and depending on the load, what are the power requirement? The voltage levels are selected. For example, the small rated motor, motor of rating less than 200 kilowatts are, will be fed from 415 volt. If the motors are higher than 200 kilowatts, then it will be fed from say 6.6 .6 kV. So, uh, Based on that, you will be selecting that whether your system will have a 6.6 .6 kV voltage or not, whether it will have 3.3 kV or 415 volt or 11 kV. So depending on the loads, the voltage levels are selected. Then the insulation level and its coordination. Generally, insulation coordination is applicable uh, on, uh, on and above of 220 kV voltage level. Below that, insulation coordination is not required. Okay. Then there comes the voltage control reactive power control reactive power control means basically power factor control actually voltage control and reactive power control both can be done by power factor control that is adding a capacitor in the system synchronous condenser is also one way but it is very uh, older way and due to its complication it is not generally used so power factor correcting capacitors are most oftenly used okay so now we will see the other methods now then come the network monitoring and data communication system between substation and load dispatch load dispatch center which is LDC. Then the very important part of a substation design is primary its protection system relay setting and coordination basically be, uh, on which I have already made a lot of videos. So there will be primary protection, unit protection, backup protection and coordination between them. Okay. And then the starting sequence, the operating sequence, that is the normal operating sequence, emergency operating system, what will be the operating condition under startup and shutdown, etc. For example, if a switchboard is having two incomer and one bus coupler, general tendency is that the bus coupler will be under closed uh, open condition and the two incomer will be closed condition, taking 50-50% of the total switchboard load. So it is a general uh, configuration by which a panel is operated okay so this kind of operating philosophy which transformer will be working what will be standby which breakouts will be closed and open so these things all these things needs to be considered during design of a substation okay okay so now we will check that how the rating of a substation is defined okay so it is defined as mentioned as i have listed here in this manner 
so the first criteria is the rated voltage of the bus bar at different levels so a substation can consist of different voltage levels so you have to define the voltage levels uh, of the bus bars uh, along with the tolerance generally the tolerance is plus minus 10 percent okay so suppose you are having a uh, substation of say 132 kv by uh, 33 kv so they are at 132 kV voltage level, the voltage, uh, the defined voltage level will be 132 kV plus minus 10 percent and at 33 kV level, the voltage definition will be 33 kV and plus minus 10 percent, okay. So then there comes the highest permissible system voltage. For example, 132 kV, the highest system voltage, permissible system voltage is 145 kV. That means for a 132 kV system, the maximum system voltage can go up to 145 kV. For 6.6 .6 kV, it is 7.2 kV. For 11 kV, it is 12 kV. For 33 kV, it is 36 kV. Okay, so I will make it table these are part of insulation coordination and basic insulation level bil so i will make a video on that and i will get, provide the table there uh, so you will be getting what are the voltage levels for different uh, uh, i mean what are the system voltage highest uh, system voltage lightning impulse voltage etc for different uh, voltage level okay so then there comes a rated insulation level it is generally represented with the voltage that is the rated voltage the maximum system voltage the lightning impulse voltage etc okay then there comes a power frequency withstand voltage now what is power frequency withstand voltage it is the uh, uh, voltage which at rated frequency voltage at a rated frequency at a uh, highest rms level what the system can withstand okay for example, 132 kV level, the uh, power frequency withstand voltage is 275 kV RMS for 1 minute. This power frequency voltage level is measured for 1 minute. That means at rated frequency, the maximum RMS value of a voltage which can be withstood by the system for 1 minute. Okay. Uh, then there comes the lightning impulse withstand voltage. So for 132 kV, it is 550 kV peak. There is a system. There is a system of 650 kV peak. Okay. Then there comes a switching impulse withstand level. Uh, so generally switching impulse withstand voltage level is predominant in case of 220 kV or above. For 132 kV and below, the lightning impulse withstand voltage is predominant. Okay. So our system has to be designed based on the lightning impulse criteria, not on the switching impulse basically what happened that when there is a switching occurs or a lightning occurs a high voltage enters into the system now our system insulation shall be such that it uh, prevent the uh, uh, adverse effect of the high voltage surge okay so up to 132 kv the uh, during switching the high voltage adverse effect of the high voltage is not that level what is for lightning so up to 132 kv it is designed on the lightning impulse voltage but 220 kV and above the switching impulse can create more harm than lightning so there the switching impulse voltage becomes predominant okay so then there comes the rated frequency with tolerance that is frequency tolerance is plus minus five percent and rated frequency in many country it is 50 hertz and many country it is 60 hertz okay then there is obvious rated power that how much amount of power the substation is handling so basically it is the rating of the main power transformer okay then comes the transformer quantity rating and its voltage ratio so you have to mention that how many number of transformers will be using in this substation what will be its rating and what voltage ratio etc and uh, then there comes the short circuit rating of bus bar along with the peak short circuit rating okay so short circuit rating has two part one is the thermal withstand capacity and another one is the peak withstand capacity so thermal withstand capacity is basically say 40 kilo ampere for one second or 50 kilo ampere for one second for lt system and based on that the peak short circuit criteria is uh, defined okay so for lt it is 2.05 times of the uh, rated short circuit current and for ht it is 2.1 times okay so for a 50 kilo ampere system for LT the peak short circuit withstand current will be 105 kilo ampere peak. Okay, so these are the basic uh, ratings of a substation which you need to be 
mentioning in the substitution. Basically, these uh, informations are represented in the single line diagram, and in case uh, if there is uh, insulation coordination is required, then the balance data is uh, mentioned in the insulation coordination data. Okay. So this is how you can represent a substation. You can define a substation. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And please hit the bell icon to get latest notifications of our videos. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video.